Welcome to the Armani Talks YouTube channel, the number one YouTube channel for you to level up your communication skills, learn the art of public speaking, social skills, and personal branding to take your message to the world. For today's episode, we're entering the world of social skills, and I'm going to be talking about the awkward silence. Let's be real. Social anxiety is not something that anyone wants to go through. If we had the preference, we would choose not to have social anxiety, yet many of us silently deal with it. Now, getting to the event is pretty difficult as it is, but let's take it a level further. What about when you are in the event? Is it still difficult? For anyone that is going through social anxiety, the answer is yes. Actually, being in the event and starting a dialogue with a complete stranger, that's what gets a lot of people nervous in the very first place. But let's say you still work up the courage and you start talking to a complete stranger, someone you've never met before. In the beginning stages, the interaction is going very, very smoothly. You guys are cracking jokes, you're asking the traditional questions, and eventually working your way up. And as the dialogue is going very, very smoothly, something starts to happen. Eventually, you start getting this one thought that says, yo, buddy, you're creating very, very good dialogue with this particular interaction. Make sure that you don't run out of things to say. Because if you run out of things to say, then there's going to be a very, very awkward silence. Do you hear me? All right. And simply from having that thought, you don't just let that thought flow on by, you start entertaining that thought. And as you start entertaining that thought, what happens is that at this point, you start leaving this present moment and you start wondering, all right, well, what's the next thing that I'm going to say? What about after that? Okay, he made a point, what about after that? And at this point, you're thinking so much to a point where the inevitable happens you end up running out of things to say. There's a silence on your end. But wait, there's more. There's not only a silence on your end, there's also a silence on the other person's end because they don't have anything to say either. What now? Well, what now is that you're mixing in social anxiety with the silence. And if the silence is more than three to four seconds long, it's going to register as the awkward silence to yourself. Now, let's be real. Is the silence awkward? In reality, it's nothing. Silence is nothing. It's just an absence of words. When we call it awkward, what we're doing is we are attaching a subjective experience to it. Now, let's be real. Is it awkward though? I get it, it's nothing, but is this a socially unintelligent move? In reality, not really. Not only is it not a socially unintelligent move, it's actually a very socially savvy move. And today's episode is going to be very fun because I'm going to be able to tackle two birds with one stone. The awkward silence is not something that we just experience in the social skills world. We also experience it in the public speaking world as well. In the public speaking world, you'll notice that when people are first starting Toastmasters, they're giving their speeches in the very beginning stages, there's a lot of hesitancy. There's a lot of nerves in the beginning stages, and that's completely normal. Yet, the nerves often amplify the words. It makes the words flow, flow, flow to a point where it seems rushed. The cadence does not seem to be there. When I was doing Toastmasters in the very beginning stages, there would be times where I would start running out of breath while I was giving a speech. And as I was running out of breath, one thing that I would do more for my speeches was just to take a pause, just to take a silence. But as I was taking the silence, deep inside, I felt really guilty. I felt as though that I was letting the audience down for some reason. So I don't want to do that anymore. Later on, when I practiced my speech, I would do it in a way where 
I was making sure that there was no sort of silences in there whatsoever. Well, the next time that I ended up going to give the Toastmaster speech, during the evaluation time, the evaluator, who was a very respectable Toastmaster, by the way, he was like, Yormani, you have been taking pauses for your last few speeches, but today you weren't taking the pauses. Make sure you take some more pauses, all right? Other than that, the speech was great. And here is this veteran that is telling me, Yo, Armani, you need to take pauses. Afterwards, I went to him and I was like, why'd you say that? Aren't we supposed to make sure that we're using words the entire time? Isn't that what public speaking is all about? And he said, no, that's not what it's all about. In reality, with public speaking, there's a beauty to it. There's an art form that is emerging before our very eyes. And just like with painting, let's say a painting art form, there's certain times where we see empty spaces or lack of color. And those are parts that allow us to appreciate the nuances of the entire artwork. It's the same exact concept with public speaking. With public speaking, whenever you do take that point of just space, not saying anything, what it does is that it allows the audience to digest your point. And if the point is very, very huge, it means a lot to your speech, then if you extend that space, it makes the audience think that it's a very, very big point. Now, let's get these lessons and apply it to the social skills world. With social skills, when there is a pause, what's really awkward about it? What's awkward about it is that thought that we had in the initial stages where it said, hey, do not run out of things to say. Because if you run out of things to say, that means you're not being charismatic. Now, why does this thought think this particular way? Well, first of all, this is the ego trying to get you scared about something. But the ego is thinking like this mainly because it associates communication skills with words. Are you telling me that's not the case? I'm not telling you that's not the case, yet that's a very, very big, big generalization. In reality, words are just one part of the communication skills arsenal. That's like saying basketball is only, only about getting the ball through the hoop. Now, if you say that to a professional basketball player, they'll actually be offended. They're gonna say, wait, are you reducing my job to just getting a ball into a hoop? Don't you understand that I have to rebound as well? I have to defend, I have to call plays, I have to work in a team, I have to do so many other things so the ball does go into the hoop? Don't you understand that, you baboon? That's what the basketball player is going to tell you. And the same thing with communication skills. The words are just one part of the entire game of communication skills. In reality, there's other parts as well. There's rapport building, there's the ability to listen, there's body language, there's you cracking jokes, there's other parts. And sometimes you don't even have to crack jokes with words. If you watch comedians, you'll see that oftentimes they'll say a punchline, the audience doesn't really laugh that much. Then the, uh, the comedian starts making all these goofy faces like, and now the audience is like, wait a minute, the line that the comedian said beforehand must have been the punchline. Now they start thinking about it. One person in the audience just starts laughing nonstop and then other people start laughing and the audience members are just cracking up at this point while the comedian is just making this goofy ass face, but he's saying nothing. So what you want to understand is that the awkward silence is only awkward because you're associating communication skills with just words while in reality, it is much more than that. When you have that sort of perspective, you start to embrace the silences because these silences allow you to gather your thoughts, make sure you're speaking effectively, and you're speaking in a cadence where the person that's listening to you, 
they can understand your points. When you're just kind of speaking like this very fast and you're just going from word to word to word, it starts hurting their head. They actually feel physical pain in their head because they're just trying to go from word to word to word. They're processing too much. Use less words and allow your tonality to flow. And eventually, you start realizing that you embrace awkward silences. And it's no longer awkward to you anymore. It was before, but nowadays, it's just silence. That's it. And eventually, you'll start realizing that silence is all around you. You know when you're talking to your best friend? You're not always talking. It shows that two people are getting very, very close when they can be silent around each other. So another thing, since you made it this far in the video, I want you to understand that one key way to build rapport is to actively be silent. Don't overdo it, of course, because whenever you do overdo anything in the social skills world, it starts to come back and bite you in the butt. Yet, just understand that it's not awkward silence. Stop thinking like that. It's just a silence. And if you can be silent around someone more and still keep a strong body language, like smiling, having a strong posture, they're not going to mind it that much. They're actually going to embrace it. And from there, you'll start realizing that this person oftentimes can be silent around you as well. If we always feel like we have to talk nonstop to someone, then we start being very formal around them. We feel very uncomfortable around them in the beginning stages. The goal to building a friend or a connection is to turn the interaction from formal all the way to informal. And once you get to the informal range, you start realizing that silences take up a whole new meaning. So stop overanalyzing this. In reality, you just gotta do less. Just don't say something every now and then. Be silent. And as you're silent, you'll notice that your words start to have much more power behind it. It allows you to gather your thoughts, it allows you to speak more eloquently, and other people will be sure to be persuaded by your message. If today's episode helped you, make sure you drop a like right on below, and thank you for joining the Armani Talks YouTube channel.